television, she was Claire Huxtable, a successful lawyer and mother on The Cosby Show. In real life, actress Felicia Rashad credits much of her success to Edwina Whedon, her English teacher at Jack Yates High School in Houston, Texas in the mid-1960s. You know, being a student with a great teacher is like being a flower. You don't see your petals opening. They just do. Because a good teacher tends that plant. A good teacher tends to those petals. A good teacher watches and learns how you learn and is really interested in seeing that light go on. That's what it is, just seeing that light. Name your favorite teacher in the comments. Go on, seeing that flash of intuition in the eyes of the student when the teacher knows, ah, they had an idea. See, that's how Mrs. Whedon was as an instructor. That's what she cared about, that we should have that flash of intuition, that we should have that idea. Ah, think about it. Felicia Rashad, then Felicia Allen, was 15 years old when she first walked into Mrs. Whedon's class. She was the first teacher I saw every day and the last teacher I saw <laughs> every day. She had this manner that made her seem like a skyscraper and that was her authority. And she commanded authority because she knew her subject very well. And it wasn't just that she knew her subject very well. She was an excellent teacher. You know, some people know the subject, but don't know how to teach. She was an excellent teacher. And there was no nonsense in that class. Well, there are those who thought I was quite a, not a mean teacher, but one who was rough and tough on them. She would ask questions that required reading, small questions, tiny questions like, what was someone holding when this happened? Or what did this person treasure? Or what did this person have? If you hadn't read it, if you picked up the cliff notes, oh yeah, you'd know about the progression of the plot, but you wouldn't know that. <laughs> and it was important to her that we should respect the assignment and that we should carry it through. Discipline. Mrs. Whedon was already a 22-year veteran when she began teaching the young woman who would become a famous actress. She remembers Felicia Allen this way. A young lady with quiet strengths, never the loud one, never the one to get any kind of trouble. Teacher will best describe you. Let me know in the comments. To a teacher. Knowing what she wanted to do, she started early in uh, drama classes there at our high school, uh, studying things like English, and applying it, she could quote some English grammatical principles to you right now if she were asked. Grammatical principles? Only if you question me. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you question me. They're not on the tip of my tongue. But her instruction has served me very well. How so? It was great. It made perfect sense. This grammatical instruction, this instruction in grammar was always complemented with literature. The literature Edwina Whedon chose for Rashad and the rest of her students at Jack Yates High was not always traditional fare. Yes, Shakespeare and Milton, classical favorites of Mrs. Whedon, but also black writers and articles from newspapers and magazines. I did add my own. I don't know that it was always legal, but uh, a current thing to me sometimes had more value than the thing, the piece of literature of some historic uh, tradition. A, a current thing, meaning? Newspapers, uh, short stories in the, the uh, newspaper, mm -hmm. something like that of today, rather than all being aged. And she would do that without making a point about it. She would do that without being pedantic. She would do that without being overt. She would just do it like it was part of the classroom structure. So it was all part of the same thing. It didn't seem like the classics were over here and Langston Hughes was over there. It was all together. It was literature. What kind of test did she give? Fill in the blanks? No. No fill in the blanks with Mrs. Whedon. It was what did you learn? What do you think about this? How does this compare to this? How does this relate to that? Writing. Writing. 
writing, and it served me very well. I was so accustomed to writing. I was so accustomed to expressing my ideas with pen and paper. It was like second nature to me. I didn't have any problems. Writing and rewriting? Revision? Writing and revision. I was taught those things in yeah. high school. But the rewriting would be a reshaping of the thought and not just a correcting of the spelling and capitalization, that kind of thing. You see it again, revision, you see it again. Not just Think, correct the spelling. No, revision. Think that phrase through. These two women share much of the same vision about teaching, so much so that they've taken to promoting it as a profession. Their close relationship, though it never extended into personal matters during high school, was strengthened by what is a dinosaur in today's modern high school, the homeroom. Homeroom is, uh, that is, that does help a lot. Because just listen to what the word says, homeroom. There's somebody there every morning. There's your key person. There's your central person. And, of course, in my homeroom, where a lot of relationships were established, I think, between student and teacher. You didn't call her by her first name. Would not do it today. It's not respectful. <laughs> no. Interesting. No. Well, you know, with many teachers, there's never a, not, well, there's never a bond that is established with students. There's a kind of a cold area between the two. But the homeroom teacher can uh, just get that coldness out and talk about it and, and get a warmer atmosphere between teacher and student. So the, the mother at school then is the homeroom teacher. I visited Jack Yates High School with Mrs. Whedon six years after her retirement. The influence she had on former students, who later became teachers, was apparent within minutes of entering the building. One time earlier, when I came back and okay, things I saw and the arrangement of furniture, this made my heart hurt a little bit. It's being used mostly as a storage room right now. But not so today. Good to look around, see the space, see where it was happening. I'm the one to stand and teach. No sitting. I just couldn't do it. I had to move around. I had to be close to my uh, students. And sometimes, I shouldn't say it, but I'd kind of wrap the arm <laughs> a bit if uh, the writing was not going as it should, that was my way of teaching. I remember one time, though, kids were taking a test, my, one of my tests, not a standardized test, and to kind of uh, help them get through the ordeal, I had some uh, small chocolate candy pieces that I just put on each desk as I went up and down looking at the test papers. What I'd like to do is uh take you back down memory lane. Remember this? Oh um, God, look at that person. Oh my, look at that person. But you gave that to Mrs. Sweet? Yep. Read what's on the back. Dear Mrs. Wheaton, I love you more than anyone I've encountered during my career at Yates, that's the name of our school. And when I'm gone, Please remember me as your nutty student who always thought the world of you. Love, Felicia. Class of 66. That's sweet. <laughs> Bring back memories? Yep. Bring back a little... Well, I'll do it again then. <laughs> Felicia Ayers Allen, drum major at Class of 66. Mrs. Wheaton, you're the bossiest little woman I ever did know, and I love you. Uh-huh, lift up my four. That and many more reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was bossy. <laughs> what, what she was, um, she was reprimanding a student who was on the football team, and she got so excited. There was a tall football player 
in my homeroom. And he had done something. I don't even remember what the offense was. His name was Major Stevenson. And she walked over to his chair. Now, she was dressed, completely dressed. The teachers came dressed very nicely every day in her heels, in her high heels. She wore them all day long in class. And I came to the front right before him and started just uh, reprehending him, reprimanding. And she was standing over him and she said, Major, Major, that just isn't the way this is going to have to work now. Major, you're just going to have to do better. Major was sitting in the seat and he was taller than she. And he turned to her and he, and he patted on the shoulder and he said, Calm down, Miss Wheat, calm down. And the class just rolled. And she just, she just looked like that and turned and walked back to her desk. And lo and behold, I found out they were laughing because I was even shorter than he when I stood there in front of him. So he was seated, but was taller than I was. She was shorter standing than he was? Than he was sitting. He was sitting at his desk and he was taller than she was in her heels. It was hysterical. He just turned around and said, Calm down, Mrs. Wheaton. So and some of the other kids were just kind of stifling a laugh because of what they saw. And here you were <laughs> chewing him out. Oh, I was going to town. <laughs> yes, indeed. Today, Yates High School looks much as it did when Major Stevenson and Felicia Allen were students there. When Mrs. Whedon began teaching in 1942, she made only $3,000 a year. For her last few years in education, Mrs. Whedon worked as an administrator, but pay was better. Still, in 1986, her last year on the job, she earned only $46,000. That's with a master's degree and 44 years of experience. But I was able to wisely save and even try a little investment. So uh, life has been good, and still is being good to me uh, financially, so I don't have a lot to complain about. Able to buy a home and buy a car here and there, and send uh, one son to uh, Harvard and to Johns Hopkins, the other one to Purdue, things like that I was able to do, so life was good. Mrs. Wheaton and other teachers at that time prided themselves on continuing education. Every summer, they were in class somewhere. Every single summer, they were taking classes. They were sharpening themselves all the time, part of a very rare breed. Felicia Rashad is not the only one influenced by Edwina Wheaton. Every year, Mrs. Wheaton gets letters from former students who became teachers because of her. So the circle goes on, Mrs. Whedon. I would imagine it started long before you, and there was someone who inspired you to go into teaching. Then, because of your dedication to teaching and the force searching for something meaningful to give back to the world, and of course, I'm not the only one you inspired. My brother and Mrs. Rashad sprang readily to mind among many others, I'm sure, and the circle goes on. Edwina Whedon still lives in Houston, Texas. Please let me know in the comments, at what grade were you in when you encountered your favorite teacher or teachers? For me, it was elementary school. Mr. Winling, my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Monique Bonner, my fifth grade teacher, uh, Mr. Abernethy, uh, reading, and let me see, Ms. Johnson, math teacher, and cannot forget Mrs. Dorothy Lancaster, my music teacher, all of them from elementary.